As you've seen, SwiftUI uses an animatable data property to animate change to shapes over time. But what happens if we want to animate two or three or four or even more properties inside our shape? Now, animatable data must have one value. It's just a property. But we get to decide what type of data it stores. It might be a simple double, but it might be two values put together in a new wrapper type called animatable pair. To try this out, we're gonna make a new shape up here called checkerboard, which must be created with some number of rows and columns. So I'll say there's a struct called checkerboard, which is a shape with a rows int property and a columns int property, plus our friend the path in rect method. Initially, make a new path, that's the easy part. But now we want to figure out how big each row and column is. And we can calculate this by getting the width of our rectangle, how much space we've got to draw inside, and dividing that by how many columns we want. So our width is 100, and our column count is two. We divide 100 by two to say each column is 50 points, for example. So we'll say our row size is a rec dot height, available space to draw vertically, divided by the double of our rows, how many rows we want. And our column size is rec dot width divided by double of columns. Now we can loop over all the rows and columns, making alternative squares colored. So we'll say for row in zero up to rows, and then for column in zero up to columns, we can decide if this particular square should be colored by adding row and column together and saying is the result a multiple of two. So we'll say if row, if row plus column dot is multiple of two, now it's time to color the square. We're gonna add a rectangle here. We can decide where to draw it by getting the start X and start Y like this. Let start X be our column size, size of one column, multiplied by the double of our current column number. So column zero, we've drawn at zero. Column one will be drawn one column size across, column two, two column sizes across, and so forth. Then let's start Y be our row size, multiplied by the double of our row. And that's a start X and Y position. So now we can make our full rectangle. We can say our rect is a CG rect with our X being start X, our Y being start Y, our width being our column size already made, and our height being our row size. And then we'll call path dot add rect that rect. Finally, return path. And that's our checkerboard shape done. We can now make a four by four checkerboard down here in content view, but we're gonna use at state properties to store values for row and column. So we can change them over time. We'll say there is at state private var rows is four, at state private var columns equals four. And then down our body, we'll say there's a checkerboard with rows of rows and columns of columns. But when that's tapped, I want to animate this. So I'll say on tap gesture with animation and I'll use, uh, let's do dot linear duration for three seconds. I wanna animate the rows and columns to a new value. I'll say I want twice as many rows and four times as many columns. So lots more data being crammed in. And now I press Command R to build and run this code. We should be able to tap on one of these squares and see it all being well animated. Let's find out. Now notice, it did not animate at all. It just jumped from being four by four to eight by 16 without animation, even though we asked for animation. As with simpler shapes, the solution here is to add an animatable data property that we set with all the intermediate values along the way that SwiftUI is calculating for us. Here though, there are two catches. First up, we have two properties we want to animate, not just one anymore. And second, our row and column properties are integers, and SwiftUI 
can't interpolate integers. There's no value between 1 and 2 in integer land. To resolve the first of those problems, we're going to use a new type called animatable pair. And as its name suggests, this will contain a pair of animatable values. And because its values can be animated, the whole thing can be animated. We can then read individual values from there by saying first and second, as you'll see. To fix the second problem, we're going to do some type conversion. We're going to convert a double to an int by using int sum double and go the other way by saying double sum int. So to make our checkerboard animate correctly, it's rows and columns, we're going to add a new property here, var animatable data, and its type's going to be an animatable pair of double and double. So it stores two values, two doubles. When we get this thing, we'll send back an animatable pair of double our rows and double our columns. That's a type conversion from int to double. When we set this value, we're gonna say our rows is the int of new value dot first, and our columns is the int of new value dot second, like that. Type conversion from double to int. And now when I run the code, we should find the change happens smoothly, like this, or at least as smooth as it can be given when we're having to work with whole numbers here, but they animate in correctly to a, from a four by four to an eight by 16. Of course, the next question is, how do we animate three properties or four properties? To answer that, I want to show you the animatable data for one of SwiftUI's built-in types called edge insets. If I press Command O and search for edge insets, then press Enter, it'll load up the SwiftUI interface here. We can have a look at how it works. And I'm going to scroll down and find its animation data. Here we go. It's that. It's an animatable pair with a CG float, another animatable pair with a CG float, and another animatable pair with a CG float, CG float. So they have three separate animatable pairs, and then just dig through them using code, new value dot second dot first dot second or whatever, all the way through. I am clearly not going to claim this is the most elegant of solutions, but I hope you understand why it exists. Like Swifty Y knows it can read and write the animatable data for a shape, regardless of what data it is or what it means. It has no idea how that's going to be used. Without having to reinvoke the body property 60 times or 120 times a second, again, 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 it just changes the parts that are actually changing. 